Hello, I'm Gisette Trunnell, a Flossy Scrapper Design Team member, and today we will be creating a mixed media canvas primarily using Tim Holtz and Ranger products. The first step will be to prep the canvas. I used a Prima Flower as my theme color and mixed white, teal, and blue paint to get a color close to that. I'm laying down the color rather haphazardly and will be removing some of it with a paper towel to create this modeled canvas that you are currently viewing. The next step will be using Texture Paste by Ranger to apply a stencil. So here I'm laying down the stencil and with the Ranger Texture Paste, I'm applying it using a palette knife. I'm filling in all the slots, making sure that it is smooth and removing the excess. Now I'm lifting up the stencil, placing it on the other section of the canvas. I'm gonna go back and knock down some of this texture on the first one. And you can see that here where it's been knocked down in that one corner. Doing the same thing with this other corner of the canvas. And again, I'll be when I lift this, I would have knocked down that texture. And here is a Heidi Swap stencil that has random dots of varying sizes that's being applied to the top of the canvas. All of this will be allowed to dry thoroughly and the next step we will go in and begin coloring. I'm making sure that all the excess is removed and the stencils are washed well. So now, first step, I'm going to use Distress Stain. This is worn lipstick. I'm dabbing it onto the dried texture paste in the far corner. Stain is a little more translucent than paint. It still lays down a very intense color because it's being placed over a white texture medium. This texture medium is designed specifically to work well with the distress and it is also activated by water. Now on the other side, because I'll be laying a coffee cup directly over this, I wanted more opacity. So I'm using mustard seed to lay down again this random coloration and as you can see it's coloring very well and a little more opaque and then just to get it into the stenciling I'm using my finger to um, rub it in. Because of the opacity you don't have the varying depth that you have with the stain so I'm going back in with straw and then finally with spiced marigold. If I can get it to work. There we go. And again, moving that in and then find and then daubing off any excess that may have drifted out. The next step, oh yes, I forgot. I'm now using the Spice Marigold. And you can see how there's more definition of the flowers. And as I smooth this in, you'll begin to see that the lacing pattern is starting to show. I'm going to do the same thing with paint on the other side using Barn Red just to give it that little bit of pop of color. And then finally we'll be coloring the dots on the top and I went back to the stain as because I'm wanting to enhance the entire color of the canvas um, and give some depth. And I just start out by globbing it on, daubing maybe is a better word, 
and then smoothing it out. And later we'll be enhancing these dots further. I am overlapping it into the other colors as well and then blending it out. We'll be adding additional color as we lay the items on top. But for now, I'm just creating this background. I do have an idea where the placement of the items go, and I'm building up the layers with the colors to try to create what will later become shadow. And then I'm adding it along the side. And then again at the bottom. Sorry I went off screen. We're new at this whole video processing. Okay, so now the canvas is complete and it will be set aside to dry. The next step is creating the actual coffee cups. I'm using two papers. These came from the 6x6 pad by Kaiser. Nice brown neutral tones that will work well with this theme. All these items are available through Flossy Scrapper and they will be linked in the video below. So what I will be doing here is taking the paper and stamping on the back side of it. Because the stamps are a bit small for this project, I need to enlarge it somewhat, and I also do not want all the writing. So I'm going to be taking the stamp, stamping it on the back side, and I'll be doing this for all three of the images, the coffee cup, the latte cup, and the bean bag. So I'll turn it over, stamp it, and then cut it out. Obviously, I don't know which way the stamp goes. There we go. I'm using archival to permanent ink. There's a lot of moisture that goes in to this process, laying down the paste and the inks. So I don't want any chance of running. And had I used a dye or water-soluble ink, it may have ran and bled. Even though it's on the back side, it still has that tendency to come through. So just to make sure, I use a waterproof ink, one that you would use for watercoloring. And here you can see that I'm just cutting out the coffee cup, basically going around it, um, leaving a margin. Slowly cutting away. The next step is to apply, well, I guess I need to cut out the handle first, and then we'll be applying to the canvas. I repeated this process with the line paper for the latte cup, and I used Nadine Helmet sticky back canvas to do the same thing for the bag. And then I used a Prima product by um, Prima, which is a 3D gloss, and that was used to adhere all of these items to the canvas. All right, so now the cups have been cut and have been adhered to the canvas using Prisma 3D gel. Both the cup and the latte cup were applied in the same manner. And then using sticky back canvas, again, the bottom of the bag was cut, applied, and here I'm checking to see that, that I've secured the ruffles and that they will stay. This will help us um, give the impression of a fuller bag. The areas around these cups have also been gelled to make sure um, that should I need to wipe off or adjust just anything, I'll be able to do that. 
So now i am cut out the top of the cup the same way, um, stamping it onto some paper and then leaving an outline. Now I'm going to be cutting it out of vellum. Vellum was chosen because when you start laying product down, it tends to rumple, roll, and it will give us more of a sense of whipped cream. If we had used a paper that was flat and it did not move, it would be harder to create that fluffy sensation. I left an edge on the bottom so that as I'm trying to adhere this to the canvas, I have plenty of paper to play with. Sometimes with all the rolling and moving, you have to do a little bit extra trimming. All right, now the next step is I will be using some Prisma watercolored pencils. Using some neutral, going to be following the lines on the stamp in the whipped cream area and creating some lines. As the next layer of product is laid down, these lines will give us a sense of shadow and depth and then a third product will be applied over the top that will give us the white texture paint impression and we'll leave some of the areas showing so that the shadowing will show through. Now here I'm using a bit darker pen and now I'm going to take some water and blend this out. This just softens the lines. The next step after this has dried will be to apply a product that is a souffle. It's a white, thinner medium with a little bit of glitter. In some areas it will be translucent and in others it will be opaque. All of these products are available through Flossy Scrapper and the product list is located below the video. So here you will see scooping it out, laying it down on the vellum, patting it in. I'm mentally imagining what whipped cream would look like if I just shot it onto this paper. And so generally I'm laying this paint down to try to mimic that. And as you see, the paper is beginning to roll and curl. While this will help us in the end, it's a bit of a pain when you're trying to get something applied and it keeps wanting to crawl away. But I seem to be taming the beast a bit. And I just keep layering. Oops, I let go and there it went. So let's uncurl it and try to flatten it down. Of course, the medium is ending up all over the mat. So I need to clean up that mess. Add a bit more. So this concludes part one all of the canvas, the whipped cream, will be set aside and allowed to thoroughly dry. So I hope you'll come back and join me for part two as we continue with our latte.